Welcome to Ms. Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Ms. Smith. In this video, we're introducing Unit 7. This is our last unit. Yes. Okay, and then we start prepping for our final exam, but the end is in sight, so I know you guys are excited. Okay, so for Unit 7, it's all about statistics. It's all about looking at data sets and making decisions and judgments based on those data sets that you've been given. I want to do a video just on some terms that you should know, just kind of introduce a couple things as well. So one of the first things I want to introduce is called a dot plot. And I know people have different names for this. Dot plot is just what we call it. Um, but essentially that's, so I did this one and I, I pretended that I was talking about each of your family members' favorite color. Okay, so you can see that two people chose black, right? We, we signify somebody making that choice with an X value or an X value with a little X. So um, some people use dots, hence the name dot plot, but at any rate. So two people chose their favorite color was black, one person said red, two people said green, and three people said blue. So dot plots are good for a small amount of data, and it does show those individual data points. I can see that one data point that I know someone chose, okay, for each one of these values. So that's when a dot plot would be a good choice. We also have box plots, and I'm not going to talk too much about this because my next couple videos are going to be all about box plots. Um, this is also called a uh, box and whiskers, so you might be familiar with that name. Um, but just for information at this point, box plots are good for large amounts of data. So it, it doesn't show individual data points. These points that we're showing you are not necessarily individual data points. They might be or they might not be, um, but they're good for showing the whole picture. So if you've got a ton of data that you want to show in just a little, if you've got a ton of data that you want to show in a visual, a box plot is a good option. Again, we're going to talk a lot more about those. Okay, a histogram. So this is, it looks kind of like a bar graph, but instead of a bar graph having um, spaces between each point, these um, bars, if you will, are all squished together. Okay, so there should never be a space in between these bars, and it's called a histogram. This is good to show intervals of data. So like I thought of this of like, hours in the car per week, okay? Um, so, you know, you see this many people spend one to three hours in the car per week. For this many people, and I, and I didn't show, you would have something over here that would show um, exactly, maybe, I don't know, I'll add that in now. Maybe like this is 10, okay, and like this is eight, I did not plan that out well. This would be six. <laughs> this is not a well spaced out graph, but that's okay. And this would be two. All right, you get the picture. So it's saying 10 people um, spend one to three hours in the car. All right, um, approximately eight people spend four to six hours in the car, approximately 10 people spend seven to nine hours in the car, and approximately you know, it looks like six people spend 10 to 12 hours in the car. So it's good to show intervals of data, and that's an interval. So it's like, eh, all this data falls between one to three hours. So that's just a couple different types of charts or plots that you'll see in this unit. Another thing I want to point out and for some reason, this, this confuses a lot of people, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Deciding if your data is skewed left, symmetric, or, or scary, if it's skewed left, if it's skewed right, or if it's symmetric. Okay, usually they're gonna show you this in like a histogram form, so it'll have like bars with it, but they could show you other ways as well, but typically we're gonna use bars to show this. And literally, to determine if something is skewed right or skewed left or symmetric, you start at the top 
and move how the data moves. So the data moves down and then do a really kind of fancy tail. See how I've kind of curved it up? Wherever your fancy tail is, that's how the data is skewed. Okay, so this is just kind of my very basic way to tell how data is skewed left or right. So if the tail is on the left, it's skewed left. All right, so jumping over here, you start your line at the highest form of data, move down with the data and do a little fancy tail. Where the tail is, that's how your data is skewed. So the data is skewed right in this case. Now here for symmetric means it's pretty evenly spaced. So I could draw a, a pretty even without having a tail. You know, symmetric doesn't have to be perfectly symmetric. I know it is in this picture, but just overall, there's no real skewing right or left of the data. Okay, so just a couple things. Let's flip to the next page and we're gonna look at some more terms that you should know. Okay, so hopefully you'll see some terms on this page that you recognize. Um, you'll notice that I've listed a data set up here. It is already in order. It is essential that it be in order. So if it's not in numerical order, your data set, and they're asking you for things like mean, medium, mode, range, it's a good idea, particularly with median, to go ahead and put it in numerical order. Okay, so just a heads up. But this one's already in numerical order. The first term, and most of the students recognize this one immediately. Um, so being able to find the mean, or also known as the average of a data set. Now to find the average of a data set, you add up all the numbers, and then you divide by the total amount of numbers. Okay, so and the mean is, is signified with that symbol. So it's like an X with a line over it. Okay, so you'll need to be able to identify that in the future, that that means mean. So let's go ahead, let's add up all of this data set. So let's see, I've got one plus five plus six plus seven plus 10 plus 12 plus 15 plus 15 plus 16. Sorry, JJ. and enter. So I got 87, but now I need to divide by the total number of numbers. Okay, so let's count how many numbers there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need to divide by nine. All right, and I get 9.6 repeating. Let's round that to just 9.67. So in this case, with this data set, my mean is 9.67, okay? Next, my median. So um, my median is the middle data point. Now, there's a big asterisk with that. It's the middle data point once it's in numerical order. So from lowest to highest, okay? So again, if it's all scrambled and out of order, you're going to need to put it in order to figure out what the median is. But luckily, ours is already in order. So some students like to like do a jump. So from here to here and then from here to here. Other students like to just count and then divide by two. I personally am a fan of this just covering method. So covering and then moving in one at a time. And I see that my middle term is 10. So that's my median. Now sometimes if you've got an even um, amount of data, so this is an odd number of data, we said it was nine points total. If you had like 10 points, you might be in a situation where let's say you had two terms in the middle. Okay, and you didn't have an exact middle. When that happens, you would have to find the average of those two terms. So in this case, I would do 10 plus 12 and then divide by two since there were two numbers total. And your answer would be 11. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's not always going to be an actual center number. Sometimes you'll have a double center. Mode. Mode is the data point that occurs most often. So people think mode the most. Okay, so it could be that you have no mode. 
If you have no repeating data, you would have no mode. Or you could have more than one mode. Like if you had something, multiple numbers that repeated the same number of times, you could have more than one. Looking at my data here, I only have one repeat and it's right here with the 15s. So my mode would be 15. All right, for my range, that is the highest number minus the lowest number. So I see my highest number is 16 and my lowest number is one. So I would do 16 minus one, which would be 15. All right, now standard deviation. Now, we don't like our Math 1 students get too hung up on what is standard deviation. There'll be plenty of time for that later. Um, but essentially, just to sum it up, standard deviation is the measure of how spread out your numbers are. So it'll be a number value that measures how well spread your numbers are. Okay, that's kind of the easiest way I can just sum it up in a sentence, okay? So to find standard deviation, and this is the symbol for it, it's like a little O with a curly and an X. Okay, that's standard deviation. We've gotta use the calculator. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do that, and you'll also see some things that might help you out up here as well. So to find, I'm gonna keep that kinda low. To find standard deviation on the calculator, we need to go to a button we have not used before, uh, I believe, in this entire class. I don't think we've ever used this button before. And you wanna make sure your, your calculator is cleared so you don't have any weird settings on, I don't know, second plus 712, okay? That's how you clear it. Let me say that again, second plus 712. That'll clear your calculator of anything that anybody has put on there. Okay, so we need to hit this stat button and it kind of makes sense. We're talking about statistics, so we're gonna use the stat button. So hit the stat button. We'll be pretty familiar with all these options by the end of the unit. So we want to edit our list. So we're gonna hit, you can either hit one or just hit enter to edit. And you'll see we've got list one, list two, and list three. Um, for right now, we're just, for this problem, we're just gonna be using list one. So I want to type in all my values up here. Okay, so I'm gonna do them one at a time. One, five, six, seven, 10, 12, 15, 15, and 16. And this will tell you if you, scroll up to the last value it'll tell you how many values you have so it says l19 that means there are nine values it's a good ideal just to double check and say okay one two three four five six seven eight nine yes i do have nine it's very easy to make a mistake when you're inputting that data especially when there's a lot of it okay so once you've got that in we're going to hit the stat button again and we're gonna move to the left. Right now we're in the edit function. We want to move over to calc. So you hit, um, I think I said left, but I meant to say right. <laughs> so you hit the right button once, and now we're in calc. Okay, you'll see this first option says one stats, ver stats. That's what we want, okay? So just hit enter. Now it'll bring you to this page just hit, keep hitting enter until it takes you to the next page. So we'll hit enter one, two, three times. And now this is all the statistics of that data set that I typed in, okay? So you'll notice right up top is that symbol that we said meant mean, the average, and it'll tell you the average for the data set. You need to know how to be able to do it by hand, which is why we went through that first, but this will help you if you're in a pinch or you're trying to do it really quick, or you have a lot of data. This will really help you. So you'll see the mean was 9.6 repeating. That's exactly what we got, 9.67. All right, now let's see what else will help us. There's that standard deviation symbol. So the little O with the curly and the X, Okay, that's the standard deviation. So it says our standard deviation. We're gonna round that to the nearest hundredth. So it would be 4.94. That would be our standard deviation for this data set. That's how we will go about finding it. Let's scroll down and see what else this can tell us. You see them uh, right there, med, it stands for median, okay? 
It says the median is 10. What do you know? The median was 10. Okay, so unfortunately it does not, or I don't know any way for it to tell you mode or range. You'll have to know how to find those on your own, but this is an easy way out to find mean, median, and standard deviation. Okay, one other cool thing that I want to show you, this I'm just kind of tacking this on at the end. Um, a lot of students find this helpful. I'm going to clear out of here. couple tricks. So if we go to our stat and we go to edit, and see this list, that list is gonna stay in there until I either A, clear the calculator, or B, clear the list. How do you clear your list extra quick? Okay, you want to, you're at the one. Move up to where it says L1. Hit the clear button, clear button, and then hit the down button, and it will clear that list out. Very helpful, especially if it's a really long list of data. Okay, so that's that's one easy trick. The other easy trick is they will do this to you where they will give you, and I mentioned this before, a very long data set. This is a pretty small data set. They'll give you a very long one and it will be all out of order and you've got to put it in order. So that is a headache and a half to try to like figure out, okay, what's the smallest number in here? Okay, cross that one off, write it, find the next smallest number. I mean, it takes forever. There's a very um, nice shortcut to doing that. So let's say I was given just some random numbers and I'm just gonna put random numbers in here. So we'll say 30, 55, 25, 15, 19, 10, eight, 16, 100. I don't know. Okay, so I put a bunch of data in random order just to simulate, you know, you being given um, a bunch of random data out of order. Okay, so I can make the calculator put this data in order for me. And to do that, go to stat. You'll see two is sort A. Okay, that means sort in ascending order. So you might notice three says sort D. That would be sort in descending order. So that would be from highest to lowest. Ascending would be from lowest to highest, which is typically what you're gonna want. So hit enter. So we wanna sort in ascending order. Now I'm gonna move this calculator up so you can make sure and see. Make sure it's a view. Yep. You're gonna hit second one and you'll see that when that little blue L1 value, that's why we're hitting to second so we can get to the blue, it says L1. You can close that parentheses or not. I don't think you have to. I like to just because it looks better. Um, so that's saying sort in ascending order our list one. Enter. And it says done. I love it. So let's go back and look at it. Stat, edit, and there's all those numbers I put in and now they're in order. So I can very easily, if I need to, you know, even if you're just copying them down from here, it'll save you a ton of time and a huge headache. So that's a good little trick to remember. All right, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.